Michelangelo's David, probably the most famous sculpture in the entire world, and it certainly is a remarkable thing. Whenever I see it, this is, this is odd, I know, I, I can't help thinking about football because I'll always remember it. I was, I was filming a TV series for the BBC. We were in the Academia Galleries at the foot of the Great David. We had a cherry picker a crane that was going to take me up to the top of David so I could look him in the eye. Um, there were problems with the machinery. It was very, very hot. And England were playing in the World Cup finals. And they had this huge match against Germany. It was the World Cup of Tears, Paul Gascoigne. And I was actually watching the England match at the foot of David. So <laughs> while David was beating Goliath, England, sadly, were, were not beating Germany. Um, but that's, that's, my, that's my personal memory. Of, of the, but I will always remember that day, above all, for the fact that I did indeed go up on the cherry picker and, and, and I, was, I was lifted right up to the level of David's face. So I'd look into his eyes. Um, and it was just the most fantastic experience. What is the sculpture? Well, it's an image, essentially, of a figure that the Florentines always saw or had traditionally seen as the symbol of their own city. Why so? Because the Florentines uh, were unusual in Renaissance Italy. Theirs was a republic. They did not live in a tyranny or a despotism. Theirs was a republic. And relatively small, and relatively lacking in military power, let's say. Uh, so they always saw themselves as underdogs and they always saw themselves as being threatened by these great giants, like for example, Naples or Milan, ruled by these great powerful families such as the Visconti. They were always the great threats. So they associated themselves with little hardy, plucky David, who took out his sling and killed the great giant Goliath. And, that's, and there's this long tradition of Florentine sculptors creating images of David Donatello before Michelangelo had done the same thing. Um, but there's a kind of weird paradox that people forget when they look at Michelangelo's David, which is that after all, he's meant to be small. That's the whole point. David defeats the great giant, Goliath. But Michelangelo has carved him as if he were a giant. And you can read that two ways. You can think, well, oh God, the threat to this city must be absolutely enormous if this is the small David that has to resist it. I mean, it's, it's like, ooh, what are, they, what are they expecting? Nuclear weapons? Um, or, which is, I think, more likely what it symbolizes, it symbolizes the idea that, yes, we've always been David. We've always been David, the small guy, the little guy, the, you know, the guy who punches above his weight. But now, little David has really become quite big, quite powerful. And you have to remember that at this point in history, 1501 to 4, when Michelangelo is creating it, Florence has really been flexing its muscles. It's become a powerful place. And before too long, actually, it will cease to be a republic and will become a Medici tyranny. It will become um, a state under the rule of a single family like so many of the other states. And maybe that is also partly predicted uneasily in, in the form of this sculpture. But above all, you know, when we look at it, uh, as Giorgio Vasari, the very first historian of the Renaissance said in so many words, the only response you can have to this is jaw drop. Amazing, how extraordinary. This huge block of marble, generation after generation of uh, Florentine sculptors had, had tried to do something with it and no one had been able to uh, wrestle and chisel it into shape. But Michelangelo did it over the course of three years and created this astonishing, graceful, extraordinary image. Um, influenced, I must say, in my opinion, by, by the drawings of Botticelli, who Michelangelo absolutely admired and which he would have seen um, in, in, the, uh, in, in the court of Lorenzo the Magnificent, the Medici, who brought Michelangelo up. So if you see a kind of similarity between the sculpture of Michelangelo and the painting of Botticelli, I don't think that's entirely an accident. He looks into the distance. 
He's this David. It's always very interesting with the David. It's like, where is he in the story? This is not a David who has killed Goliath. This is a David who is thinking about the task that lies ahead. He's forever vigilant. But as I said just now, you know, above all, one's emotions before this sculpture are just awe and admiration and that thing of how did he do it. And there's a wonderful story, actually. I love this story. That the, the very first, um, as it were, the mayor of Florence, he was called the Gonfalonieri. Uh, he was a man called Pietro Soderini, this, this sort of bureaucrat, this official, whose job it was to say yes or no, or we approve of the sculpture or we don't approve of the sculpture. I mean, as if he had a choice, right? So he's, the, he's there and he's on behalf of the Council of Florence and he's, he comes to see it. And he, you, can, you can hear, Vasari tells the story. Um, and he's obviously like thinking, well, I've, I've got to find something wrong with it because it's so amazing. I've got to find something wrong with it. So Soderini apparently says to Michelangelo, uh, yes, it's, uh, yes, it's, but isn't the, I think the nose is a little bit too big. Now, if I'd been Michelangelo, I think I would have punched him, but Michelangelo didn't punch him. He saw, he knows you've got to get these guys on the right side. Michelangelo simply climbed up to the top of his scaffold with a chisel in his hand and <laughs> He made knocking noises on the and he had a little handful of, of, of marble dust that he'd taken up in his hand and he dropped these chips down so they landed at Soderini's feet as he looked up. <laughs> and he said, is that any better? I've changed the nose, I've made it a bit smaller. As he gave Soderini a way out, he gave the bureaucrat a way out and Soderini said, oh yeah, that's fine. That's fine. It's a lovely story. It's like it's a great story about uh, Michelangelo's sense of humour and his ability to get his own way. So there you have it. That's the David. Thing.